Congratulations. My name is Evelyn and I'm the manager of the postnatal unit. And I would like to welcome you here after the birth of your baby. We would love for you to use our new Danu suite, which was created especially for new mums to relax and have some quiet time with their baby day or night. This suite is named after the Celtic goddess Danu, who is considered the great mother of Ireland, representing knowledge, wisdom, nurture and strength. Danu represents how strong new women are and empowers mothers as they embrace on this new journey of motherhood. If during or after your stay you have any questions, we will be delighted to help, so please don't hesitate to contact any member of staff. You put your cold water in first, you add your hot, you just check it with your elbow. If it's comfortable for your elbow, it's fine for the baby. It's about 36 degrees centigrade, the water temperature. You put your hand underneath the baby's head like that. You just took the baby under your elbow resting on your hip. Now, I'm holding the baby in the same position and I'm going to wash the baby's hair. So just wash it nice and gently. This is a very good baby. And I'm gonna come back onto my mat and I'm going to lie the baby back down and I'm going to dry the baby's head well. Babies lose a lot of heat from their heads so make sure that you dry the baby's head very well. Now, when you're lifting the baby into the bath, just turn the baby over on its side, like, over in this position. Just put one arm, your left arm underneath the head and hold on to the left arm. And put your right arm underneath the bottom and hold on to the left leg. Now you see there is no way this baby's going to fall on me. I've got the head well supported with my arm here on the left and I've got a good grip of the baby. Now nice and gently you're going to let the baby into the bath. If the baby's enjoying it, of course, just leave them in for a little while. Babies are very used to water from being inside, so they love the sound of the water. I'm going to lift the baby out again. Now you see I'm lifting the baby out nice and gently. So you settle them down, give them a little cuddle settle them down and then you're going to dry the baby off well. Don't forget areas where they can get sore if you leave them wet. All babies are quite fat in here so get right in there under the chin because if you leave areas wet they're going to get red and sore. They are all get right under the armpit here where they're all they're like that and another area is get right under the behind the knees and in the groin area. There are areas that can actually get sore if you leave them wet. So you make sure that you dry those areas off very well. After your baby is born, the cord is clamped and you are left with a stump where the umbilical cord was. Every time you change the baby's nappy, you check the cord stump to make sure it's not red, swollen or oozing. The cord will fall off itself after 5 to 15 days, so just keep it clean and dry and you don't need to worry about it. Just make sure the cord is clean and if needed you can take cool boiled water this means water that was previously boiled in the kettle and left to completely cool and using a piece of cotton wool gently clean around the base of the stump and most importantly dry the stump after you've cleaned it when you change your baby's nappy make sure to fold the nappy down underneath the stump to make sure it's not getting rubbed on if there is any oozing redness or foul smell contact your healthcare provider
Congratulations if you've decided to breastfeed. This is the best start in life you can give your baby. Breast milk is unrivaled as the ideal food. Not only has it the perfect mix of nutrients, but also all of the infection-fighting antibodies your baby needs. However, like anything, breastfeeding is a skill that needs to be learned. But once it's established, it will give you great pleasure. Breastfeeding is the very best start you can give your baby in life. It is a very special, unique formula, tailor-made for babies. It actually protect, protects your baby against um, all known infections, particularly ear infections and chest infections, and also protects your baby against viruses. We now know that breast milk also helps de develop your ba baby's um, nervous system. For you, breastfeeding is really good. It helps you build up a unique bond with your baby, because when you breastfeed, you release lots of lovely hormones that help and aid this bonding. It also helps you get your figure back because you burn up 500 calories more per day when you breastfeed. And it has a great protection against ovarian cancer, breast cancer and osteoporosis. While you're still pregnant and in the early days after the birth, your breasts begin to produce a substance called colostrum. This is extremely easy for your baby to digest, making it the perfect first food. The first hours after delivery is the ideal time to get started on your breastfeeding. Well, breastfeeding on demand is recommended with breastfeeding. That doesn't mean leaving the baby sleep all day, particularly in the early days and weeks of breastfeeding. Uh, babies should be, should be woken up every three to four hours if they're not demanding feeding. However, breastfed babies can often feed much more frequently than that. How your baby is attached to the breast is key to the success of breastfeeding. This is called latching on. When your baby is in position, wait until their mouth is open wide. You can tease it open by gently pressing the upper lip with your nipple. Bring your baby to your breast, the chin and lower lip first. Baby's mouth should cover all your nipple and about one inch of the brown circle, the areola, around your nipple. Your nipple should touch the roof of the baby's mouth with his tongue underneath. Once your baby has a good latch on, there'll be a period of quick suckling to get the milk flowing and then rhythmic suckling. When your baby is properly attached to your breast, you'll notice that his mouth is wide open with a big mouthful of breast and his top and bottom lip are curled out, like the letter K. His cheeks are full and rounded and his chin is pressed into your breast. The suckling pattern changes from short sucks at the beginning to long, deep sucks with pauses. There are many different ways to position and attach your baby, but there are some key principles. So I'm going to talk you through a number of different holes. Uh, the first thing I would say to mums is get yourself comfortable. Finding a position that suits you and your baby is important for successful breastfeeding. Make sure you're comfortable and well supported. Use pillows or cushions if necessary. And whether you're sitting up or lying down, keep a drink close by and most of all, relax. There's some new research out on a new position for breastfeeding called biological nurturing and this actually works very well in attaching a baby on a breast. In this position the mother is not sitting up bolt right upright or lying down, she's semi-inclined and she's lying the baby on top of her body and in this position the baby actually self-attaches. This hold now if you put the baby in what's called the crook of your arm, lying along your forearm and position the baby with its tummy to mummy's tummy, we call it tummy to tummy with the baby in a straight line and if you tuck the baby's bum under your other breast it makes for very good alignment. Then we encourage mothers in the early days of breastfeeding to support their breast with feeding. You can do this by going in onto the breast with a C hold. Now mothers often instinctively go in with a V hold but that will actually make your nipple very sore. So if you support the breast in a C hold with the under finger well away from the areola that will actually make a very good shape of the breast for your baby. It's tummy to tummy, it's nose opposite nipple, and it's a C hold on the breast, and when the baby opens his mouth, you bring the baby swiftly onto the breast. So we say, bring the baby to the breast, and not the breast to the baby. This will actually make for very good attachment. Another variation of this hold is actually something called the cross cradle hold, and a lot of new mums like to initiate this with breastfeeding because they feel they have a lot of, of control in, in the actual initiation of the latch. In this, it's similar to the first hold except you're doing the C hold 
with your other hand and you're holding the baby's back and neck with the baby in straight alignment again. So it's very important that you hold the baby's back and neck and again you're supporting the breast in a C shape. And you're bringing the baby to the breast, waiting for the baby to make a large open mouth and when it makes a large open mouth you're swiftly bringing it onto the breast and then you can put your arm around the baby like this and relax into a nice comfortable breastfeed. There's another hold you can use for breastfeeding called the rugby hold or the football hold. So in this hold you support the baby's back and neck and um, let the baby lie along your arm and tuck the baby underneath your breast. And in this position um, you use the same principles of nose opposite nipple and bring the baby to the breast with a wide open mouth. This is a very good position to use for babies, uh, particularly twins. Another way of breastfeeding your baby is lying on your side with your baby tucked up beside you. A lot of mums uh, breastfeed lying down in bed, particularly late uh, during the night. With this, the mother lies on the bed with two pillows, usually her head on the pillow and her shoulders on the bed, and tucks her baby up beside her, nose opposite nipple. Again, it would be the same principles of bringing the baby swiftly onto the breast when the baby makes a wide open mouth. This is a really comfortable way to feed a baby. There are lots of good indicators that breastfeeding is going very well by looking at your baby's output. In the first couple of days, the babies have very little wet nappies, and ideally one wet nappy. Day one, two, day two, three, day three. And when your milk comes in on day five, the baby will normally have about six wet nappies in 24 hours. This is a really good indication the baby is breastfeeding well. Another very good indication is actually looking at the stools. And babies have meconium stools for the first day or two and they have a changing stool, which is usually black, green or brown, day two, day three, day four. And when your milk comes in, a baby who's breastfeeding really well will have three to four yellow CD stools in 24 hours. If your baby has these sort of stools, the baby is breastfeeding very well. Your breastfeeding is going well when your baby is alert and waking for feeds, has a minimum of five or six wet nappies and two soiled nappies per day after the first week, has gained weight, sleeps and settles during the day and is feeding comfortably and pain free. If a baby is not correctly latched on your breast, you won't see rounded cheeks, you'll see dimple cheeks. You'll also see the baby doing very short little sucklings as opposed to long rhythmic sucklings or you may see a lot of the areola. Um, in that case you also may feel a lot of discomfort feeding. So if, the, if that happens it's very important to break the latch and start again. And the best way to do that is actually put your finger into the baby's mouth and let the baby actually suck on your finger and break the latch very gently. Signs that breastfeeding may not be going as well for you is if the baby is not wetting and dirtying its nappies. So particularly in the early days, if you look for urates in the nappy, which is pink staining, and if the baby is not passing sufficient wet and dirty nappies, it would be very good to contact a health professional to help you with your breastfeeding. As your baby's immune system is not developed for the first year of life, you must sterilize all bottles and suitors, or you could make your baby seriously ill. Wash your hands and clean work top before you start. Wash the bottles, teats, leads and tongues in a warm soapy water.
using a bottle brush. To sterilize the feeding equipment, you can use chemical sterilizing, oil and water, or a steam sterilizer. Dishwasher do not sterilize feeding equipment. With chemical sterilizing, always follow the manufacturer's instruction. For boiling sterilizing, washed items submerged in water at boiling point for three minutes are considered sterilized. A steam sterilizing is the most common type of sterilizing used. They can be plug-in or microwavable. You add the recommended water to the base of the sterilizer, add your washed items and some bolt, including the tongs, follow the manufacturing instruction to see how long the sterilizer takes. Wash and dry your hands before removing the bottles from the sterilizer. Be careful of the steam and place items on a clean surface or tray. No need to rinse or towel dry. Assemble bottles correctly and they will remain sterilized for 24 hours once kept closed. Traditionally, when we're feeding babies, they're more um, in, a, in a flatter position like this and cuddled in. And when they're in this position, the flow of the milk goes too fast into the baby. So when we're using paste bottle feeding, which is a way of controlling the flow of breast milk or formula so that the baby can feed at a more comfortable pace, we have the baby in a more upright position. So we have you up like this, yeah, and then we tickle the upper lip and we wait for the baby to gape and ask for the bottle yeah do you want it yeah like that good girl and initially we don't have the teeth full we wait for a few sucks and then tip it up so the bottle is at a much more horizontal angle than you traditionally feed a baby in and this way we want the baby to slow down the flow of the feed going into them so you let her have a few sucks. If she's gulping, we're going to tip it down, let her take a couple of breaths and then back up again and just watch the flow. Good. Then slow it down again. And take a breath and then back up again. So when we feed babies this way, it's much more comfortable. For them. We used to think that babies had a preference or would get nipple confused. Now we understand that it's more about flow preference. So babies get used to a faster flow. So if we want a baby to go between breastfeeding and bottle feeding, it's important that we don't get the flow of the milk too fast. So this is a way of comfortably feeding a baby. It's also very good for um, babies who are just formula feeding or bottle feeding. Okay. People worry that babies take in too much air when you're feeding babies this way, um, but we all take in air when we're feeding. In this slow pace they can push some air out through their nose and they will burp after the feed. So we just sit them upright and wait for the burp to come. So, when you're offering the bottle again, again you look for the gape and see. And if the baby is done, they won't take, the, they won't accept the bottle again. When babies feed, especially from a bottle, they take in air. They can also take in air if they cry before feeding. If the air isn't brought up, it can get trapped and cause discomfort later on. There are some common positions for winding, but use whatever suits you and your baby best. Try holding your baby, leaning against your shoulder and rubbing or patting their back. It's a good idea to put a towel or a cloth over your shoulder 
in case more than wind comes up. Another position is sitting your baby upright on your lap, supporting him under his chin and rubbing his back. Or lying your baby face down across your lap and gently rubbing or patting their back can also be a good way of bringing up wind. The postnatal period is from delivery until six weeks after the birth. Some complications that can occur during the postnatal period may include some of the following. The baby blues or postnatal depression. The baby blues usually occurs on day three or day four. You can find yourself becoming more tearful. We would advise that if these feelings persist for longer than two weeks to attend your GP. Breastfeeding problems can also occur, such as an infection of the breast called mastitis. If your breast becomes red, hot or inflamed and you get a fever, this might be due to an infection and may need treatment by antibiotics. And it's important to attend your GP or the hospital for a review. Bleeding can also occur. and um, Most bleeding will happen immediately after delivery. However, some can occur more than 24 hours after the birth. This can be from an infection or some retained tissue such as a placenta membrane. It's important if you are bleeding heavy or passing large clots or soaking more than one pad per hour to attend our emergency department for further investigations. Perineal infections can occur. This is after often an episiotomy or if women have a small tear that needs stitches. There's a risk that these stitches can become infected, so it's very important to keep an eye on your stitches. If you notice that you have a lot of pain or are worried about an infection or breakdown of your stitches, do attend your GP or again attend the hospital for a review. We would also advise taking regular paracetamol and ibuprofen for analgesia in the first few days. It's good to keep the area nice and clean and dry and sometimes if you can let the air at the area, this can be very good to help with the healing process. It's also um, important not to put anything in the vagina, such as tampons for six weeks to help with the healing. After a cesarean section, it's also very important to keep on an eye on your wound and the stitches, again, looking for signs of infection, like redness, tenderness, or ooze. And if you're worried at all about infection, to attend your GP. Women can also sometimes get a urinary tract infection after delivery. And um, this might present with pain when you're passing urine or urinary frequency. And it's good um, to attend your GP as you may need antibiotics for treatments. If you notice that you have any incontinence that's persisting after delivery, it will be important to attend a women's physiotherapy or your GP. Blood clots can also sometimes occur after delivery and women are at an increased risk of blood clots after the postnatal, um, in the postnatal period or after they have a cesarean section. Um, another thing to note after a cesarean section is that you shouldn't drive for six weeks as you use your abdominal muscles to break and you should avoid lifting any heavy items. Important to talk about contraception after you have a baby. So after a cesarean section, we would probably advise waiting about 18 months before your next pregnancy to give everything a chance to heal. The progesterone only pill um, is recommended and this can be commenced straight away. It's important to try to take it at the same time every day and you can take it back to back without any pill free period. Other forms of progesterone only include the marina coil, which lasts up to five years, or the implant, which is a little bar in your arm, and that can last up to three years. The combined oral um, contraception pill is not really recommended to women after they give birth. 
because it can increase your risk of getting a blood clot and also it can reduce your, bliss, your breast milk supply if you're breastfeeding. And your midwife can discuss all this with you before you're discharged from the hospital. Thank you for your time. Congratulations on the birth of your baby. Some women may have stitches to their perineum following the birth of their baby. We encourage you to have a daily shower. Wash your body with a small amount of pH balanced non-perfume shower gel, only enough to lather under the armpits and breastbone. Nothing but water the rest of the way down. Take the shower head down, turn down the pressure and the temperature and allow the stream to wet the perineum. Dry your body thoroughly. Using disposable paper towel, pat the perineum and dispose of same. Take fresh paper, pat the back passage. Repeat those steps until the area is completely dry. Change your sanitary towels every time you go to the bathroom and more frequently if needed. Clots can be reasonably normal, but if you pass any, inform your midwife to inspect the clot before disposing of it. In between showers, we advise you to take a glass or a bottle of water into the bathroom as you pass urine. Wet the perineum, this will help keep the area clean. The stitches will dissolve themselves over five to seven days. Take regular analgesia if required and change the sanitary towels regularly. Congratulations on the birth of your baby. When a lady has had a caesarean section, she has a special dressing over her wound. Here in Mullingar, we use three types of dressing. Honeycomb Upside Dressing. This is waterproof and will be removed prior to discharge from hospital. Pico Dressing. This is also waterproof, but includes a vacuum function, which promotes healing and reduces the risk of infection. And the Provena Dressing. Similar to the Pico, but a different brand. Your dressing type will be dependent on a number of factors, including previous history, BMI and individual concerns. We encourage you to have a daily shower whatever dressing you have. Wash your body with a small amount of pH balanced non-perfume shower gel, only enough to lather under the armpits and breastbone. Nothing but water the rest of the way down. Despite having not had a vaginal birth, it's important to perform perineal hygiene and change your sanitary towels every time you go to the bathroom and more frequently if needed. Dry your body thoroughly. Use a separate towel or paper towel to dry the wound. If your dressing needs replaced, your midwife can help with this. Pico and Provena dressings will remain on until day seven when the public health nurse will remove. You have stitches to the skin which will dissolve 10 to 15 days, but remember, you've stitches on the inside which can take up to six weeks to heal properly. Invest in yourself. Continue daily showers as described above. Take a postpartum multivitamin and remember to continue your iron supplement. We would encourage you to have a well-balanced and nutritious diet. Include exercise as described by the physiotherapist. Wear loose-fitting clothing, nothing rubbing against the wound itself. Look out for the typical signs of infection. Redness, swelling and an offensive odour or discharge. Seek medical help if you see any of these signs. For new mums, contraception may be the last thing they are thinking about, but it's possible to get pregnant as soon as three weeks after you've given birth. Even if you're breastfeeding and your menstrual cycle has not returned to normal, if you are sexually active after having your baby, you should be using contraception, unless you are keen to get pregnant again. It's normal for midwives and hospital staff to ask you about your contraception plans soon after you've had your baby and you can bring up the topic of contraception at any time with your midwife, health visitor or GP. The choice of contraceptive methods should be initiated by 21 days after childbirth. Some methods of contraception can be initiated immediately after childbirth. 
for example, the intrauterine coil, IUS, and the progesterone-only implant, the BAR, can be inserted immediately after delivery. The insertion of the implant soon after childbirth has been associated with high contraception rates and a reduced risk of unintended pregnancy. Emergency contraception is a backup contraception that can be used to avoid an unplanned pregnancy after you have had sex without using contraception or if your method of contraception has failed, condom slipped or missed a pill. You can use emergency contraception up to five days after having unprotected sex. There are two options. The emergency contraception pill, known as the ECP, or the copper coil, also known as the postcoital IUCD. You do not need a prescription for emergency contraception. You can get this directly from your pharmacy. If you have a medical card, you can access it for free from your pharmacy. Discuss with your GP or pharmacist, or for more information, visit www.sexualwellbeing.ie. Emergency contraception is a backup contraception that can be used to avoid an unplanned pregnancy after you've had sex without using contraception or if your method of contraception has failed, condom slipped or you missed the pill. You can use emergency contraception up to five days after having unprotected sex. There are two options, the emergency contraceptive pill, the ECP, or copper coil, also known as the postcoital IUCD. You do not need a prescription for the emergency contraceptive pill. You can get it for free directly from your pharmacist. Under the free contraception scheme, you're entitled to free contraception if you are a woman or person with a uterus, you are age 17 to 26, you live in Ireland, you have a PPS number. This scheme covers GP or doctor's appointments to talk about contraception and for repeat prescriptions when needed. Prescriptions given by your doctor, fittings and removals of implants and IUDs or IUSs known as coils, any checkups or other follow-up care needed relating to your coil or implant emergency contraception, morning after pill, please speak to a healthcare professional for more information. Perinatal Mental Health Services here in the Regional Hospital in London Garth. 
pregnancy and birth are profoundly emotional experiences. Having a newborn baby is exhilarating, exhausting and physically challenging. The sense of responsibility can be daunting and the sense of inadequacy and guilt can be overwhelming. The baby blues are very common and considered normal. They usually begin on day three after your baby has been born. You may be more tearful and emotional than normal. You may feel irritable and isolated and lonely. These feelings are unpleasant, but usually pass between one and two weeks. If the baby blues get worse or last for longer than two weeks, or if your mood becomes very low several months after your baby is born, you may have postnatal depression. It is thought that 10 to 15% of new mothers will develop postnatal depression and it can last for months or even years if it is not treated. Your family and friends may notice that you have postnatal depression before you do. The signs and symptoms of postnatal depression include feeling sad, anxious and alone. You may feel guilty, irritable and angry. You may experience panic attacks. You may not enjoy being with people or even your baby. Other symptoms of postnatal depression include crying easily, feeling rejected by your baby, worrying a lot about your baby, loss of appetite, feeling inadequate, feeling tired all the time, and problems sleeping. Get help from your GP or public health nurse if these symptoms last for more than two weeks. The most important thing you can do is ask for help. Erythema toxicum, also known as Erythema toxicum neonatorum, or toxic erythema of the newborn, is a common rash seen in full-term newborns. It usually appears in the first few days after birth and fades within a week. Up to half of all newborns will have Erythema toxicum. The rash can be on the baby's face, chest, arms and legs, but usually won't be on the palms or soles of the feet. It's a blotchy red rash with small bumps that can be filled with fluid. Although this fluid might look like pus, there is no infection. Because erythema toxicum doesn't cause any symptoms and goes away on its own, no treatment is generally needed. Follow your doctor's advice about caring for your baby's skin. Call your doctor if your baby has a rash and is also fussy, not feeding well or has a fever.
My name is Lisa Duffy. I'm a physiotherapist in Regional Hospital Mullingar. I aim to see everyone on the postnatal ward after you've had your baby. I will provide an advice booklet to everyone on postnatal um, continence and fitness. In the early stages following a vaginal delivery, there may be stretching or bruising of the pelvic floor muscles. These are the muscles that form the floor of the pelvis and are important in keeping us continent. Even if stitches are present, once you have rested for 24 hours and are passing urine, you can start the pelvic floor exercises. If you have had a C-section, it is also important to start these after the catheter is removed and you are passing urine. To do these, tighten your back passage as if holding wind, your vagina as if gripping a tampon, and your urethra as if you are trying to stop your urine flow. The sensation is one of squeeze and lift. If your perineum is very sore uh, or swollen, gentle uh, quick squeezes will help relieve pain if done frequently. As you get better, try to contract your pelvic floor more strongly and hold for, for longer, up to 10 seconds. You can also do quick contractions, squeezing quickly and letting go after each contraction. Aim to increase the number of quick contractions up to 10. When having a bowel movement, you can support your perineum with using a sanitary pad or toilet paper wrapped around your fingers. The most effective way to empty your bowel is to sit on the toilet, uh, go up on your tippy toes, lean forwards with a straight back, let your tummy bulge forwards, widen or expand your waist and relax to open your bowel. When you go home, you can place a f your feet on a footstool to help bring your knees up. There is a picture of this in your advice booklet. After a C-section, there are a few things you can do in the first couple of days afterwards. When lying or, or sitting comfortably, take a few deep breaths in and let it sigh out after a few seconds. Do this regularly throughout the day. This is to help your lungs recover after an anaesthetic and helps to loosen phlegm. If you need to cough, sneeze or laugh, support your wounds firmly with your hands, pillow or a towel. And if you need to cough up any phlegm, the least painful way to do this is to huff a, sh a short forced sigh through your mouth as if trying to steam up a mirror. <sighs> In order to try and maintain circulation, keep the ankles moving up and down and round in circles. This is vital that you take care of your back after you've had your baby. When feeding your baby, try sitting with your feet on a raised footstool or pillow and a cushion behind your back. Place a pillow on your lap to support your baby. Swap which side you're holding the baby on. This is good for you and your baby. You can also breastfeed when lying on your side. For changing your baby, uh, baby's clothes or nappy, please use a surface that is at the right height for you and for your baby so that you avoid stooping over. If you have had a C-section, the heaviest you are to be lifting for six weeks is the baby. A couple of exercises that aid your recovery postnatally are in the advice booklet to help strengthen the deep abdominal muscles. After you get home, it is important to give yourself a chance to rest and recover. It is very individual as to when you may feel up to going for a walk. The first time you go, perhaps bring somebody with you and just walk a few minutes away from home, turn around and come back. The body is great at recovering, but if it's between 6 to 12 weeks postnatally, you still have any back pain, pelvic girdle pain or bladder or bowel concerns, please contact your local physio department for follow-up. Hello and welcome to the Special Care Baby Unit, Regional Hospital Mullingar. Here we look after babies from 32 weeks onwards. If your baby comes to us for extra support following birth, they may be with us for a few hours, days or weeks, depending on their needs. We have a dedicated team made up of nurses, doctors, physios, feeding specialists, along with many others that will help your baby along their journey. We are a family-centred unit and encourage you to visit and participate in your baby's feeding and care as much as possible. We also have a parent and baby room so you can stay with your baby to adjust before you take your baby home. If you need us, we look forward to welcoming you.
Respiratory succincta virus, also known as RSV, is a common respiratory problem that we see in young children and newborns. Common symptoms include lethargy, which also means lack of energy, poor feeding or breathing difficulties. Most healthy infants infected with RSV do not need to stay in hospital, unless your doctor is concerned about your baby's feeding or breathing. Treatments may include hydration, which involves a drip or oral fluids, and sometimes oxygen therapy. Infection with RSV in older children usually presents as a cough or a cold. RSV is spread by direct or close contact with secretions. RSV can live on surfaces such as toys for many hours and for half an hour or more on the hands. Hand washing and room cleaning should help minimize the risk of spread. The incubation period ranges from two to eight days. Isolation of children with RSV infection is recommended and this can be up to one week. Patients with RSV infection shed the virus usually between three to eight days. If you are concerned about your baby, you should contact your healthcare provider um, for assessment.